Hello students, we are going to study the second part of acid bases and salt, that is bases. So first of all, what are bases? Bases are oxides and hydroxides of metal. Example, copper to oxide, copper to hydroxide. One example for an oxide, the other is an example for hydroxide. Now how to define a, define a base? A base is a compound which reacts with hydronium ion of an acid to give salt and water only. Only has to be mentioned here because when a base combines with an acid, it gives only two products that is salt and water. Example, copper 2 oxide when it combines with hydrochloric acid, it gives copper 2 chloride plus water. Copper 2 hydroxide combines with sulfuric acid, another example is taken for an acid, to give copper sulfate and water. So you can see here, in both the cases, you find only salt and water being formed. The equations are not balanced. The first equation, you need to write a, a 2 here because there are 2 chlorine atoms here. The second equation, you have to check for the hydrogen and oxygen. So you have 4 hydrogens, so write a 2 here. So the equation is balanced. Now coming to the next part, bases are, some of them are water soluble and some are water insoluble. The water soluble bases, the water soluble bases are called alkalis. So alkali, what are insoluble bases, we don't have any particular term, they are just called as bases. So alkali is a compound which when dissolved in water, yields hydroxyl ion as the only negatively charged ion. The underlying words are keywords which have to be mentioned when you write any definition. Any definition. So alkali is a compound which when dissolved in water yields hydroxyl ion as the only negatively charged ion. I hope you remember the definition of an acid. Acid is a compound which when dissolved in water yields hydronium ion as the only positively charged ion. Now example for alkali. Sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide, they are strong alkalis. Calcium hydroxide and ammonium hydroxide, they are weak alkalis. Now, when you take the definition of a base or the what is a base, you find that oxides and hydroxides of metals they are. But here you find ammonium hydroxide as an example, which is not a metal. This is an exception. Ammonium is ion, though it is not a metal, its hydroxide is a base. About this in detail, we will study later. Now note, this is a very important note. All alkalis are bases, but all bases are not alkalis. What is the meaning of this? All bases are not soluble in water. The ones which are soluble in water are called alkalis. So therefore, all alkalis are bases, but all bases are not alkalis. Classification of bases. Bases can be classified based on various factors. The first one is based on the strength of an alkali. Based on the strength, bases can be or alkalis can be classified into strong alkali and weak alkali. The strength of an alkali depends on the concentration of hydroxyl ions present in an aqueous solution of the alkali. You have studied this in acids. The strength of an acid depends on the concentration of hydronium ion. Here it is hydroxyl ion. The strong alkali. Strong alkalis dissociate completely in aqueous solution producing high concentration of hydroxyl ions. These words are very important. It undergoes complete dissociation producing high concentration of hydroxyl ion which means all the molecules of sodium hydroxide, example sodium hydroxide here, in all the molecules of sodium hydroxide dissociates to produce Na plus and OH minus ions. So, mostly only ions are present in the solution of these alkalis. One more example is KOH. KOH in aqueous solution produces K plus and OH minus ion. So, there is complete dissociation producing large number of hydroxyl ions. Therefore, it is an example of strong alkali. A weak alkalis dissociates Partially in aqueous solution producing low concentration of hydroxyl ion. They also undergo dissociation but the dissociation is partial. Therefore, very few hydroxyl ions are found in its solution. Most of it remains as molecules. So, in the solution of a weak alkali, you find molecules and ions. Whereas, in the solution of a strong alkali, you find only ions being present. Now, based on the concentration of bases, they can be classified into 
concentrated alkali and dilute alkali. So concentrated alkali has high percentage of alkali in aqueous solution. Dilute alkalis have low percentage of alkali in aqueous solution. One example we can take. One example is if there is an 100 ml of an alkali, if it is 90% is water and 10% is an alkali, that is any base added to it, then it is a dilute alkali. If it is 90% base and 10% water, then it is concentrated alkali. The next classification is based on the acidity of bases. The number of hydroxyl ions produced per molecule of the base in aqueous solution. You remember the definition of basicity of acid. That is the number of hydronium ions produced per molecule of the acid in aqueous solution. Or the acidity of a base can be defined as the number of H plus ion with which a molecule of a base combines. Based on the acidity of a base, it can be classified into monoacidic base, diacidic base and triacidic base. Monoacidic base, the acidity is 1. That is, it ionizes in aqueous solution to produce 1 hydroxyl ion per molecule of the base or contains 1 replaceable hydroxyl ion per molecule of the base. This replaceable word is very important. So, replaceable hydroxyl ion per molecule of the base. That is, it replaces only one hydroxyl ion. Therefore, the acidity is 1. It dissociates in one step. Monoacidic bases dissociate in one step. Example of monoacidic base is sodium hydroxide. In aqueous solution, it dissociates to produce Na plus and OH minus ions. The other examples for monoacidic bases are KOH, potassium hydroxide, NH4OH that is ammonium hydroxide. There are many more examples. The next is diacidic base. Acidity is 2. That is diacidic bases ionizes in aqueous solution to produce 2 hydroxyl ion per molecule of the base. Or it also can be defined as it contains 2 replaceable hydroxyl ion per molecule of the base. That is why the acidity is 2. It dissociates in one step. Diacidic bases also dissociate in one step. Example, calcium hydroxide is an example of a diacidic base. Dissociates to give Ca2 plus that is calcium ion plus 2 hydroxyl ions. Another example is copper 2 hydroxide. Also dissociates in aqueous solution to produce Cu2 plus ion and 2 OH minus ions. The next is triacidic base. Acidity is 3. Triacidic base ionizes in aqueous solution to produce 3 hydroxyl ions per molecule of the base or contains 3 replaceable hydroxyl ion per molecule of the base. Therefore, its acidity is 3. It dissociates in one step. Example for triacidic base is aluminium hydroxide and ferric hydroxide. So, aluminium hydroxide in aqueous solution dissociates to give Al3 plus ion and 3 OH minus ion. It produces 3 hydroxyl ion, therefore its acidity is 3. Unlike acids, in acids, diacidic, dibasic acid and tribasic acids dissociate in 2 step and 3 steps, whereas here monobasic, monoacidic, diacidic and triacidic bases dissociate in one step. The next is preparation of bases. Bases can be prepared by various methods. Example, bases from metals. Metal plus oxygen produces a base and that is basic oxide. We have learned about acidic oxide. Non-metallic oxides are called acidic oxide. Metallic oxides are called basic oxides. So example for this, metal, sodium is taken plus oxygen gives sodium oxide which is a base. Another example is magnesium combines with oxygen to form magnesium oxide. So these two oxides are bases that is basic oxides. The next method is bases from basic oxides. So basic oxide plus water also gives a base which is an alkali that is water soluble bases are called alkalis. Example so potassium oxide is a basic oxide. When combines with water, it forms potassium hydroxide, which is an alkali. Sodium oxide, a basic oxide plus water, gives sodium hydroxide, 
which is also an alkali. The next method of preparing bases are from active metals. You know what is active metal? Active metal are the metals which are present above hydrogen in the activity series. Starting with potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, aluminium, zinc, iron. Bases are prepared from active metals, active metals with alkali. So active metals taken as an example here is potassium and sodium. Potassium or sodium combines with water to form respective hydroxide with the liberation of hydrogen. Then the next method is preparation of bases from salts. The salts which are taken as example here are aluminium chloride and ferrous sulfate. Salt solution is used. Salt is dissolved in water plus Sodium hydroxide gives sodium chloride plus aluminium hydroxide which is a white colored precipitate. Then ferrous sulfate when it combines with sodium hydroxide produces sodium sulfate and ferric hydroxide which is also a precipitate. So these are the bases which are prepared from salt solution, aluminium chloride and ferrous sulfate. The next method is by decomposition of salts. Certain salts on heating produces bases that is carbonate salts and nitrate salts. The example taken for a carbonate salt is copper 2 carbonate which on heating decomposes to produce copper 2 oxide and carbon dioxide. Copper 2 oxide is a base. That is an example for a carbonate. Lead nitrate is another example which is taken for a nitrate which on heating decomposes to produce lead 2 oxide and nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. So lead to oxide is an example for a base which is prepared from lead nitrate. The next is properties of bases, physical properties and chemical properties. Physical properties, bases are better to taste. Potassium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide are highly corrosive. They damage the skin and therefore they are also called as caustic alkalis. Chemical properties, Alkalis react with ammonium salts on heating, liberate ammonia. There is a very important uh, equation here. That is ammonium chloride combines with sodium hydroxide. This is ammonium salt. This is a base or alkali. Combines to form sodium chloride, ammonia and water. So ammonia is highly soluble water. Therefore, it does not uh, remain as ammonia. It dissolves in water to form ammonium hydroxide which is an alkali. So alkalis react with ammonium salts. Alkali reacts with ammonium salt to form ammonia. Ammonia is a highly soluble gas in water. Therefore, it does not remain as gas. It forms ammonium hydroxide with water. Alkalis react with metallic salts solutions to produce insoluble hydroxide. This is another chemical property. The salts which are taken as examples here, copper 2 chloride, ferric chloride and zinc sulfate. So copper 2 chloride combines with sodium hydroxide to form sodium chloride and copper hydroxide. It is a blue color precipitate. Ferric chloride reacts with sodium hydroxide to form sodium chloride and ferric hydroxide which is a reddish brown precipitate. Zinc sulfate reacts with sodium hydroxide to form sodium sulfate and zinc hydroxide which is a white precipitate. All these precipitates are used as uh, to identify the basic radical. This we will be studying in analytical chemistry later on. The next is since we have completed with acids and bases completely now we will have to study about neutralization reaction. What is neutralization reaction? The reaction between acid and base to form salt and water. Here neutralization reaction is studied as ionic theory. So what is ionic theory? The process by which H plus ions of an acid combines with OH minus ions of a base to give salt and water. Example hydrochloric acid which has H plus and Cl minus ion plus sodium hydroxide so base which has Na plus and OH minus ion to give sodium chloride and water. The H plus ion combines with OH minus ion to form water. The Na plus ion combines with Cl minus ion to form sodium chloride. So thus hydrochloric acid donates H plus ion which is also called as a proton to the hydroxyl ion of sodium hydroxide which accepts the proton forming water. So therefore according to lowry bronsted theory acids are proton donors and bases are proton acceptors which you can see in this example. Acid donates H plus ion and base 
accept this H plus ion to form water. The last part of bases is uses of bases. There are a number of bases used for various purpose. For the manufacture of soap, sodium hydroxide is used. Manufacture of bleaching powder, calcium hydroxide is used. As an antacid, magnesium hydroxide is used. Antacid is to neutralize the acidity of the stomach. So, it is commercial name of magnesium hydroxide is called milk of magnesia. In fire extinguishers, aluminum hydroxide is used. In softening of water, that is to make the hard water soft, calcium hydroxide is used. To remove grease stain from clothes, ammonium hydroxide is used. These are some of the uses of bases. The next is indicators. There are two types of indicators. They are common acid base indicators and universal indicator. Indicators are weak organic compounds. They can change color depending on the H plus ion concentration. Example for common acid base indicators are litmus, methyl orange and phenolphthalein. For universal indicator, the example is a pH paper. Now coming to the definition of pH. pH is actually power of hydrogen or strength of hydrogen. That is the negative logarithm to the base 10 of H plus ion concentration expressed in moles per liter. In short, it can be expressed like this. pH is equal to minus log to the base 10 H plus ion concentration. This is the diagram of a pH scale. A pH scale shows the relative strength of acids and alkalis, which ranges from 0 to 14. 7 indicates neutral. Below 7, it indicates acidic. And above 7, it is alkaline. If the value of a substance is 6, it is slightly acidic and as you move down the scale, 1 indicates it is highly acidic. Then 8 indicates it is slightly alkaline. More than 8, that is up to 14, the alkalinity increases and 14 is said to be strongly alkaline. Indicators are used to identify acids and bases. So here we have blue litmus which is used to identify whether the given solution and acid are base. So when it is dipped in acid, you can see it changes to red. Next we have red litmus. So this is used to find out whether it's a base. So with base, it changes to blue. Red changes to blue. Then we have one of each red and blue litmus to find out whether the solution is acidic or basic. And when you dip it, you can see there is no change in color, which indicates it is neutral, that is water. So we have acid changing, blue litmus red, base changing, red litmus blue, and water, in water, the blue and red litmus both remain the same. There is no change in color. The next is universal indicator. Universal indicator example is pH paper. You can see the pH paper, which is green in color. Now when I dip it in acid, you can see the color changes to yellow. There can be different colors based on the strength of the acid. Here it shows yellow in color which indicates it is slightly acidic. If the color changes to red, then it is strongly acidic. Next we have pH paper dipped in water. The color remains the same which shows that water is neutral, neither acidic nor alkaline. Then we use the same pH paper in a base. The base changes into indigo. So which indicates it is strongly alkaline. Next we move on to the utility of indicators. That's the pH values. It is used in agricultural industries to test the pH of the soil for the better growth of plants. In the medical field, it is used for the diagnosis of various diseases by checking the pH value of the blood and urine. In milk diaries, it is used to check the pH. There is a change from 6.6 .6 indicates that the milk has turned sour. So, with this, we have completed with bases and indicators. In the next video, we will start with salts. Thank you.